Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the A Plus Parents Podcast. Uh, I'm not your host, but you'll be you'll be getting to know our host here shortly. Dennis Tenoria is the founder founder of Mr. DMath Live, and he's the host of the A Plus Parents Podcast. Uh, I'm Carson Jones. I'm helping him jumpstart the show, helping him produce the show, and uh, really looking forward to to this podcast because uh, if you didn't know. Like over 87% of students say they don't believe that their school education will help them in, a, in everyday life. And uh, for me, that, that, that was the same for me. And there were so, there are so many students that don't believe what they're learning will actually apply. So let's get into it. We'll talk about the A-plus parents podcast. We'll talk about what to expect coming up. But I want you all to get to know the host for now. So Dennis, welcome to your show. Ah, how fun. Welcoming to my own show. That's awesome, Carson. <laughs> Thank you. So I love doing these first episodes where we, we actually talk to the host because they, there's an old saying that people don't care what you know until they know how much that you care. And they, I want them to get to know you because getting to know you, I've gotten to know your heart, your passion, and the way that you light up when you talk about what you do. So let's talk about that first. Like, what is Mr. DMath Live and how did it start? What was the origin story? Mm, okay, so... It's interesting because in today, you know, in today's world, right, online virtual education, now everybody's like, oh, yeah, of course, right? But when we started, people thought it was kind of weird, right? So, uh, you know, if I look back, I've been an educator since 1986, I think is when I started in the education world, right? So uh, a few years back. And I worked in the public school system, realized that that really wasn't for me, and I kind of was you know, taught all kinds of uh, middle school, high school, worked with gifted students, dropout prevention, kind of did it all. But I ran a tutoring company during that time as well, because I needed to supplement my income, right? So that was my background. And the more that I was in the tutoring business, the more that I realized that one, I was learning a lot because I was working with all kinds of students, you know, from first graders through college students and everybody in between. And I was a math guy. So things got really busy in the tutoring business. And finally, one day I had a parent say to me, they said, why don't you just write your own course? And so I thought about that and thought about it and thought about it. And technology became available sometime around 2008, 2009. And I started recording videos. And in 2010, uh, we launched Mr. D Math. And Mr. D Math was a program that was for homeschool students. And we, I was just in, uh, in Florida and I went and I visited and I had these kids would come with me once a week. We started with 20 kids. And it's amazing to think about what we've done in the last 11 years to get to where we are today. But when we started with that, everything was on a DVD. And so we were handing out DVDs every week to the kids and they'd be like, okay, come back next week and we'll give you the next DVD. And so there was a lot of recording going on and, and, uh, and we've kind of continued to evolve. So now our students are literally all over the world. Uh, predominantly in the U.S., and we focus on homeschool students, but we are now working with some students that are in public schools that work with charter schools. Uh, we have some school programs that use our program, and so you know, then we've kind of gotten a little more, uh, a little more known in the world. And in uh, 2013, I just had this idea: I can't be everywhere. You know, I, I can be in your living room on a pre-recorded video, but I can't be with you face to face. And I knew I couldn't keep driving to cities in Florida to keep doing what we were doing. And I thought, well, how do I get there? And so I came up with the idea of doing these live online classes. And at the time, people thought that was a little unusual and kind of weird. And, and the platforms weren't that good back then. You know, you think about like eight years ago and how much it's changed in the last eight years. But we started doing live online classes and it started to, started to grow. People started to like it. Uh, the online classes took more of a, uh, took more of a, a liking. And I realized that I didn't have to be in Florida if I didn't want to be in Florida and I could still teach the classes because I could have a student in Alaska, but I could be anywhere. And so our family or our homeschool family, we decided to move to Spain. And when we went to Spain, uh, my son uh, dances, my daughter studies languages. And once we got there, I was like, I can do this anywhere. So I've been, I travel now between Spain and Puerto Rico, which is where I met you, Carson, which was so great. And uh, so my kids are uh, in Spain almost full time all year round. And then I travel back and forth and, uh, you know, to, to visit, visit and be there. 
But we really took the idea of being online um, about eight years ago and took that. And we've been working with training teachers and showing teachers about how to do live online classes and how to be with people. And, you know, it's kind of a different environment. But once you get used to the environment, I love it. And I would I would rather do it the way we do it now than when I was standing in front of 30 or 40 kids at one time in a class. But being online, just there's just so much more availability as to what we can do and how we can do it. It's actually been awesome. And so, unfortunately, there's a pandemic. The pandemic happened. But what it did was it actually gave us the opportunity to take what we were already doing and kind of lead the way in a way for people to see this is how you can do live online classes and be with people. And here we are. You know, it's kind of funny that kids log in and they they hop on Zoom and they all know how to use it now. And there was a time that we used to have to train them. Here's how you turn on your sound. Here's how you turn on the camera. Here's how you use the chat. Well, now everybody just knows exactly what to do, which is kind of cool. But that's uh, that's where we are. I kind of started from over 30 years ago to today. And today we have math classes and why we call it now Mr. D Live is we are live. And but at the same time, we have uh, programs beyond math. So we have American Sign Language. We have uh, we have uh, English classes and grammar and uh, literature classes. We also have track and field class now, a music class. And we even have uh, because of Spain, we have a flamenco dance class and a flamenco guitar class. So kind of fun. Economics is coming on. So we there's all kinds of fun stuff that we're adding. Uh, I absolutely love it. And I love the way that you light up when you talk about these ideas, because I could I could see your passion. I could feel your passion. And it translates through through the classes. Like, but where, the, where did the, the inspiration? Because I know your inspiration was because you were a teacher. You were in the system for so long. What did you see about the current system, about going to school and being in a classroom all day? Like, where did you see that failing for, for you and for students um, that like, like me? Yeah. You know, it, it's funny. Um, I got introduced to a book by Robert Kiyosaki called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And, and also uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And I was reading those books and this was, oh my gosh, over about 20 years ago. Right. And I'm looking at and I'm reading this book and I'm looking at the book and I'm like, everything I'm learning about in these books is not in my math class. N nothing. And I'm like, and I was learning things as an adult that I didn't learn in high school. I didn't learn in college. I was even a business major. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm learning all these things now that I didn't learn in school. Something's missing. And so for me, it was like, how do you bring to life? the things that I noticed that were missing into a young person's life. And so throughout our courses, it's always talking about, you know, where do you see this again and how this might show up in your life? Uh, and so, you know, I, um, I probably was one of those teacher burnouts too. Like when I left the school, I actually left the school system thinking I would never come back. I was done over. That was it. And I found myself, uh, I found myself in this place where I wasn't very happy because I was working and I was working and I was doing real estate, right? And I was like, I don't really like it, right? But it was different. But I noticed that it wasn't being, it wasn't fulfilling. And so I just sat down one day and I was like, what do I, what am I supposed to be doing? Well, the message was clear, man. You're a math guy. Get back to work. And now start making those, start making those and record the, record the, make your own book, really. But I got introduced to technology where I could record videos. And once I saw that, I actually saw that when I was I was leading a real estate seminar and this guy came in with this digital overhead and I was like, oh, that's the coolest thing ever. And I had just started working with some uh, with some video editing and I was uh, working on that. And I was like, wait a minute, I can make my own course. And that's kind of how it started. Like I knew that the passion was math and I knew that that's what I was born to do. And, you know, it just turns out, uh, you know, I like teenagers, you know, and some people are like, oh, they're, uh, you know, teenagers are kind of like, they kind of go, no, no. Uh, but I always think um, the teenage, the teenagers in the world today, they're just strange enough to be interesting because they're going through all those kind of unusual places in their life. And they're kind of trying to sort things out. And to me, that's just, that's like, I love that because they're looking, they're discovering, they're opening things up. And sometimes their ideas make sense and sometimes they don't, but they're okay with that because that's their world. Uh, and that's the kind of people I wanted to hang out with. And so writing the courses then just became an opportunity of a way to be self-expressed, to do what I love to do, which is be around young people and open up what's possible for them. Yeah. And, and you made this make so much sense to me because 
I remember going to school. I was there at eight o'clock and I was there until eight or, or until three thirty. And there were a lot of gaps in there, a lot of not learning and a lot of other stuff happening. You you shared this for me. And I'd love for you to make that make sense for, for our audience. Like why homeschool over the traditional education system? Yeah, it's great. So think about, you know, I mean, there was a day I used to get in the car and drive, to, you know, I'm driving to the school, right? So I'm in the car and I'm in the car by 630 in the morning in school. Classes start a little after seven. I'm there till two or three in the afternoon. I go home. But what happens during the day? Well, if you came into the class and I can share this because I was one of those guys that was there. You walk into the class. Let's say the class starts at eight o'clock. You come into the class at eight o'clock. Well, until everybody gets in, gets settled, you take role, you do all the things that you need to do. Now it's 805, 807, something like that. So you've already taken seven, five to seven minutes. That is just time that you're doing logistics of you know who's there and who's not there. The next piece of this then is now everybody's getting their stuff together. So now you're going to introduce a lesson. Well, maybe that takes 15 or 20 minutes to introduce the lesson. You got distractions. You got kids that want to go to the bathroom. You, got, you know, you got all these things happening and announcements coming in. You may get 15 or 20 minutes of some good instruction. And now you're halfway into the class. And the next thing you know, that kids have a little bit of time to practice. And now what? Now they're getting ready to go to their next class. Well, what happens when they go to their next class? They get seven minutes to pass between classes. So there's another seven minutes that are taken away. That last five minutes before class ends is taken away. That's non-classroom, that's non-class instruction time. You got lunch. You got all the things that happen during the day. And if you took the amount of time, like say you got 30 good minutes, 30 strong minutes of instruction time. And you took your seven classes and you compact that 30 minutes into those seven classes, it's three and a half hours of actual time that you're working. Well, what if you got up at eight o'clock in the morning and you had that same three and a half hours? By 1130, if you went straight through, you'd be done with your day, your school day. You did the same amount of time. Maybe you need a break. Maybe you need 10 minutes between that. Well, take that same 10 minutes. You're still done by noon, right? So you start at eight. You're done by noon. You had some breaks. Now it's time for lunch. And your day is done with school, including you've completed everything there's to do. So there's not like homework and there's not the extra studying that there is to do. You get that into the next day. So, you know, when I look at it, homeschooling provides the opportunity where you can actually complete the entire day, what there is to do in the education part of your day in terms of like your scholastics. You can get that all done in a few hours. And then what can you do? Well, you can focus on the things that you love to do. And maybe some of that is school. Maybe there's more that you want to do. Maybe you're really into math and you want to do more math, but maybe you're into computer programming and you want to work on the computer or you're an artist or you're a dancer or you're an athlete. Now you're out and you're playing ball, or you're going to the gym or you're doing whatever it is that you do that the homeschooling allows you to have that freedom so that you can do that. And like even with my son and he dances, his dance classes are in the morning. Well, he does a school in the afternoon. You can't do that if you're going to public school. They don't customize the schedule. Here you can. Uh, teenagers like to sleep in. Okay, well, then start your day at 10. <laughs> and then you're going to go till two or three. And then you're off and you're doing the next thing. That's okay, too. But it just depends on how does it work and what's your schedule like? And when do you have that peak time that works best for you to work on your education? Yeah, well, I love that piece because that was when I was growing up, it was always well, the people that are homeschooled don't get to integrate into the world. They don't get to make friends. They don't get to do this and do that. And what you're saying is, hey, learn your core curriculum without all these distractions. And then all the stuff, all the, the ideas, the interests, the things that, that really pique you, you can do that in the, in the extra time because your school day is now over at 1130, 12 o'clock, right? Right. Yeah. And if you think about when you're in school, when you're in class, so you're like, oh, I want to I want to have I want to have I want to be socialized. Okay. When does the socialization actually happen? Well, it happens in that five minutes passing from one class to the next and you're busy and you're going there. But when you're in the class, you've got an instructor talking to you and you're taking notes. You're not socializing. I mean, you're in a social setting because there's all these people there, but it's not like there's socialization going on. So even when you're at school, well, what happens? Well, you're between that passing time between classes when you're at lunch. That's the time that the social. So not really is that really happening. But if you can complete your, your schoolwork for the day, let's call it, call it schoolwork, right? That when you're done with that, what are you passionate about? Where do you want to be around, like we call like-minded people? 
So now you want to be in the things that you love to do. And you're around the people that also love to do that. Now you're creating. And now there's so much synergy that happens and the kinds of things where ideas get born, really. And so we look at um, you know, the homeschoolers. It's just like when they have the ability to do that and they have the ability to get out and, and do the things that they really love to do, they're happier. They're more interested in their schoolwork. Why? Well, because it's making a difference in what they're interested in, what they're up to in their life.